Well, just as, as people arrive, I'll, I'll speak just for a few minutes to introduce myself and explain the situation that I'm here. I'm actually at home. Um, if there's an unscheduled interruption, it's because I'm nursing a small and quite angry cat who managed to um, unpick her stitches from her spaying operation. Um, she's been confined to quarters for most of the day, but I have to keep her on my lap um, and prevent her from doing a further mischief. So if she gets stroppy, I might have to um, send her out to the, to the laundry again. Um, so my name's Matt Kukuldi. I am a neuroscientist um, and I've worked for the Wicking Centre for, uh, let me see, about four years formally um, and informally um, since it began. Um, my interests are in um, the structure and the function of the brain um, and in particular how that gets um, altered and, and damaged by the disease processes that cause Alzheimer's disease. Um, so we do um, quite a lot of research that's based around um, that type of pathology and, and the effect that it might have. And obviously um, the aim of that is to try to find ways to, um, to reduce the impact that that has on the brain. Uh, and perhaps to devise ways that um, might tip the odds um, in favour of people um, having less severe symptoms for, for longer periods of time if, they, if they're unlucky enough to um, develop Alzheimer's disease. But I'm one of um, many staff in the Wicking Centre who, who have a diversity of research interests, um, which include uh, care and the support and, and um, and uh, empowerment of people who, who live with dementia um, in order to um, give them the, the best quality lives that they can have. Um, we look at um, the ways to um, shape communities and community attitudes towards dementia um, in order to provide a more inclusive environment in which um, everybody is able to, to coexist in, in ways that work for them. Um, we also have researchers who look at educational interventions and, and ways of raising awareness or um, ways of um, perhaps manipulating factors that have um, an impact on the risk of dementia. So we're, we're very interested in public education and how that might um, affect people's dementia risk if they're informed um, in an appropriate way. Um, so from that community of, of researchers and that sort of diversity of, of background, um, we've built ourselves what I consider to be um, the best postgraduate degree of its type in the world. Um, we were the first um, fully online um, Master of Dementia program. Uh, and as far as I know, um, none of the others have um, produced graduates yet. In fact, a few have started and, and stopped um, even before they got going. Um, so it's it's been a real um, challenge, but we expect to see our first batch of graduates at the master's level at the beginning of next year um, in 2022. Um, what we've done is we've um, leveraged the, the huge experience that Wicking has with delivering online education. Um, many of you might be familiar with our massive open online courses, the Understanding Dementia MOOC and the Prevention of uh, Preventing Dementia MOOC. Um, these are world leaders in, in dementia education and have had an enormous impact on um, over 150,000 people worldwide um, who have uh, taken advantage of our expertise and our um, well-structured programs to, to learn more about dementia. And we know both anecdotally and through research that it has changed the lives of thousands of people. Um, so that's really our, our major um, mission uh, and the reason that we're called the, um, the Wicking Dementia Research and Education Centre is that we are funded on um, uh, grants that have been renewed several times from the JO and JR Wicking Trust in Australia and we are charged with um, educating as many people worldwide about dementia in the hope of um, improving the lives of people who have dementia, and their families who care for them, and their friends and their communities and even the societies in which they live as well. So I tend to get a bit carried away with the rhetoric here. Um, you're all here to, to learn about our postgraduate programs. Um, what we'll do is I'll, I'll talk to you a bit about um, how those programs are organised and structured. And <clears throat> after that, um, we can have a Q&A session. Um, at first, I would like, um, if we could, to, to focus the Q&A session on um, information about the degrees itself, because that's the primary purpose of this session. Um, but often um, in these webinars, we do end up talking a bit about um, dementia and maybe um, you know, some of the neuroscience of dementia that's my particular interest. 
um, I might be able to talk to some of you about um, your experiences there or, or things that you might be interested in um, about the Wiking Centre as well. So in the, in the great tradition of, of all academics, um, I will now switch to a deck of PowerPoint slides. I hope nobody goes to sleep as soon as I do that. Um, but it's a fairly short presentation, which should, um, I hope, orient you towards the offerings that we have and perhaps give you some idea of how they might work for you and your plans for um, a career in dementia research. Um, is, uh, is it visible to everybody? Are we, are we all good to, to see the slides? Uh, I'll take silence as assent. <laughs> Um, okay, so at first I've just got a, a general slide here saying why study with us and of course, you know, I don't need to remind this audience of the urgent and growing challenge of dementia. Um, at the Wicking Centre we're interested in both the diseases themselves but also, you know, how to empower and support the rights of people who live with dementia, um, how to support um, and educate uh, families who, who live with um, dementia every day, um, how to transform communities to make dementia a more positive and, and healthy experience for people. And also, of course, the, the wider um, societal and governmental responses that are needed to meet um, the scale of the, of the challenge that dementia presents. Um, and as part of that, we recognise and we want to support um, a stream of research capable graduates who are going to tackle the key issues in dementia support, how to improve the lives of people who have dementia, how to um, structure and design environments, um, both for care and also for the community um, to, to um, uh, minimize the effect that dementia has on people and to integrate the lives of people who have dementia with um, the wider community. Um, and, and we want people to do that with innovation um, based on a broad um, spectrum of knowledge about dementia and its many um, facets and also the energy that, that new graduates bring. So we're, we're looking to, to bring together people who are motivated and interested in dementia research with people who can foster that interest in, and um, you know, launch them into careers where they really tackle these things that will benefit us all. Um, I see I've made a typo here. Um, the Wicking Dementia and Research Education Centre is a particularly useful place to study because we are a multidisciplinary, not multidisciplinary, um, and, and very research active community of academics. So all of our staff are research active and, and have um, both research experience and ongoing research projects. And we span a very broad um, array of domains, including care and health services and neuroscience, as I've mentioned. Um, there's many other aspects that I don't have time to go into here, but I'll give you a link on the next slide to look at. Um, at the moment, we're currently running the largest um, multi-centre population intervention trial for um, preventative dementia strategies, the Island Project. Um, we're also running the Tasmanian Healthy Brain Project, which is looking at the effect that um, education has on the ageing brain um, and whether people who have um, greater education later in life may be in fact protected from um, the onset of dementia if they're um, going to develop it will, it, will it affect the trajectory of the disease? So these are very large studies that are sort of foundational to the Wicking Centre, in addition to our large um, lab-based neuroscience research program as well. And of course, the other thing that we do to um, uh, implement our knowledge is through those MOOCs, Understanding Dementia and Preventing Dementia, which are routinely in the top five of health MOOCs worldwide and, and have extraordinary um, retention rates because students are very motivated by um, our excellent teaching staff and also by the, the quality of material that we're able to provide. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so I thought I should just mention very briefly what some of our domains of research are, um, because you may um, have an interest in, in moving into these domains um, enabled by the postgraduate Master of Dementia. Um, so we have you know, researchers who look at care and support practices and policy. Um, neuroscience of disease, um, community interventions and environmental interventions such as um, environmental design um, to improve the lives um, of people who have dementia. Um, and also um, our dementia education is the subject of intense research as well, um, which is um, essentially the, the ability of, of um, dementia education to 
to change the um, prospects and the and the environments of, of people who live with dementia. So my kitten is going berserk over to the side there and a bit distracted. Um, and of course, um, our postgrad programs that I'm about to um, describe to you are taught by researchers. Um, and as a capstone experience at the end of the Master of Dementia, we end up with one-on-one um, -on -one mentoring um, experiences where um, students are teamed with um, a researcher and, and actually work on, on research ready, um, uh, like preparation for a research project. So you can learn more about Wiking's um, many research programs at the URL that's listed there. I'll provide this to, to Louise to circulate. Oops, I've got to stop pressing that arrow button. Okay, so here's the, the core of what we're here to talk about, which are the postgraduate um, degrees in dementia. And so these, of course, being postgraduate degrees are for people who have existing tertiary qualifications. Um, so at, at present, our um, requirements are a bachelor level degree um, uh, at the Australian um, AQF7 level, which is the same as a, a UK um, bachelor level qualification. And we, you know, we have teams of people who um, routinely assess um, educational histories to, to make sure that people have the right entry requirements. So feel free to get in touch and, and we can advise you about that. Um, and it's, it's for people who need specialised dementia knowledge. Now, it doesn't have to be people who work in dementia or who um, have experience with dementia. In fact, if anything, um, we would like to um, encourage people who have an interest in dementia from another field um, to consider studying with us. So for example, you know, management um, in aged care facilities or um, nurses who may like to add a specialty knowledge base to their existing practice, lawyers who may be interested in, um, for example, um, assessing competency and, and specialising in, in legal issues around dementia, uh, architects who may be interested in, in design of, of facilities and, and um, care environments, uh, and other allied health professionals who may um, specialise in, in ageing and would like, you know, um, specialist dementia knowledge so that they can tailor their practice to, to a clientele that includes people who have dementia. Um, these degrees are fully online and they're available to both domestic Australian and international students. There's no differentiation between the, the fee structures are the same, um, although there are some um, Actually, I won't talk about fees because I get very lost very quickly. They keep, the landscape keeps changing, but we'll be able to answer inquiries if you make them via the website. Um, and yeah, we, we, we make these things fully online and that can be thought of as a depersonalizing experience. But um, I like to look at it the other way, which is that um, if you're online and, and people could be studying you know, from anywhere in the world, you might actually end up in contact and interacting with um, you know, people who are facing similar challenges or have similar interests to yourself, um, who you wouldn't normally encounter in everyday life. So you might be you know, the, the particular dementia expert in your, in your own you know, professional role or the place you work or your community. Um, and you, you know, may feel a little bit isolated in that because nobody else has your you know, particular desire to um, to make a difference um, around dementia and and to meet this challenge um, and so through this sort of broad network that we foster using these online degrees it's possible to to find a connection with people who share your passions and and even we hope um, at the end of the degree to um, to enable you to pursue those passions in a, in a research context if that's um, what you choose to do so what we do is we have three stages of postgraduate degrees, and these are coded M5X, M6X, and M7X, and they correspond to the graduate certificate in dementia studies, and that corresponds to a half year full time or one semester. So that's um, four units that we that we offer. Um, at the next level, we have the graduate diploma in dementia studies. That takes two semesters, which is essentially a year full time. Um, and that is a total of eight units um, that cover the, um, the major domains of our degree. If you want to progress to the Master of Dementia, that takes you one additional semester um, in which you study some coursework and you also have that intense um, research mentoring um, experience in, in the unit CAD 700. Um, so this year we've got um, all the 500 level units offered in semester one and all 600 level in semester two. We expect that to um, continue in 2022 so that you would 
um, begin at the graduate certificate level um, in semester one or February 2022. However, um, these availabilities can change. And if you would um, be interested um, in, in taking up our degrees, please get in touch with us and, and register with us so that we can give you updates around that just in case you know, there's demand and we, we decide to offer things a little bit earlier than that. Um, but at this stage, I, I can't say anything um, official because at the moment our availabilities are um, commencing in February. So for somebody who would like to do a full master's degree, this would be semester um, one. Oh, oh dear, Kitten is now eating the power cord for my laptop. So that's probably a punishable offence. Um, so the, um, a person who wanted to study a, a full master's program at, in full-time study would begin in semester one, 2022. There'd be then a six week break after the 13 weeks of semester. Then there'd be semester two um, across July to October. This is um, how we do it in the Southern hemisphere. And then a summer break um, incorporating Christmas and new year, et cetera. Um, and then come back and study February to May in 2023. And that, at that point, um, the master's degree would be completed. Okay, so I've talked about the major domains of the degree and here they are. So what we have are four disciplines within the degree. Um, at the graduate diploma, sorry, the, yeah, the graduate diploma level, um, we require students to complete all of these units because we have a, a very strong commitment to understanding and um, studying dementia as a multidisciplinary issue. Um, so we don't think it's um, sufficient or, or valuable to, um, to look at, for example, healthcare policies and systems without understanding the neurobiology of the diseases um, in some detail. Um, and we also, for example, um, think that these things are meaningless without understanding how they might be addressed by public health and, and um, issues around health and social care. So, at the graduate diploma level, we, we get students to study CAD 501, 2, 3 and 4 across these four core disciplines. Once you've completed that, then you move to the 600 level, which is the graduate certificate. At this point, it becomes more research focused. And at this point, it's about um, building and consolidating research literacy. And so the core unit here is CAD 600, which is Methods for Dementia Research. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I just have to take a moment. Sorry, the cat's main uh, mission became to eat the power cord. So I've had to take it away. Um, so at the 600 level, um, we've got uh, the core unit of methods for dementia research. And what it does is it looks at the main um, research methodologies that are used for the four core um, study domains of, of the degree. So it essentially um, builds critical and analytical skills around research design. Um, and the capacity to um, critically evaluate the quality of evidence that a study offers. So the, the assignments and the assessment pieces in that unit are all about evaluation of literature and, and looking at it in terms of um, its design sophistication and whether it actually um, supports the conclusions that it says it does. Um, so this is a very key unit in, in building research capability um, and is part of the, the sort of articulation of this program to PhD programs. Alongside this core unit, you then choose three of the four primary um, subject areas. So at this point, you begin to specialise a little bit. Um, you've got a basic grounding in all four domains, and now you can choose which are of the greater interest to you. And then in the last semester, um, when it uh, comes to the master's level, the core unit actually takes up half of your time, and we call that major project in dementia studies. And that's a unit which involves a one-on-one -on -one mentoring um, where a staff member from the Wicking Centre or another um, university academic um, offers a project um, to students um, and someone uh, may want to accept that project and then um, it's, it's a process of developing um, the design and the um, literature background around a major project in, in dementia research um, and it has the explicit aim of bringing a student to the point where they can commence a PhD um, and or um, develop major innovation in, um, uh, in, in dementia policy or, or organisational policy or, or um, you know, design of health systems or, or those kinds of things. 
Um, I'm, I'm very much focusing on the, the research stream because of the nature of the um, of the conference that I'm that I'm speaking to. But of course, it's it's not only about research. It can also be, you know, high level policy or, or analysis or or organisational strategy and those types of things. And alongside that large unit, you then focus on just two of the four core domains. So you end up with with um, a, a much deeper knowledge there. And that's that's also dealing with the current literature and, and peer discussion of, of current evidence. So at the end of that um, master's program, which is at AQF um, Australian Quality Framework Level 9, which is a, a coursework master's, we anticipate that students who meet that standard will come out with full research literacy, the ability to critically evaluate and design research, um, and um, explicit readiness to undertake a research project if that's if that's what you want to do so for example in that in that capstone unit the major assessment piece can be um, writing uh, an ethics application for a study so the idea is that you're actually designing your research getting into the background getting into the literature with your mentor and then going through that process of, of design and specifying a study and thinking about the ethical issues etc to the point where you're ready to go. Um, so at the end of that, um, if you're successful in entering the, the PhD program, you've actually got your design worked out, you've got your, your ethics ready to submit um, to actually, um, you know, you hit the ground running in, in, in your research project. So it's very much designed and intended as a, as a research readiness exercise. Um, or you might, for example, write a grant proposal with your, with your mentor um, and that um, again, involves study design and understanding the background and budgeting and, and strategizing around how to answer your research questions. And once again, you know, it might form the basis for a funding application that can be in process while you're getting into your research project. So it's, it's you know, really we, we see it as a, a launching pad for, for um, taking on a, a research degree. Okay. So let me just, uh, there's not many more slides, um, fortunately. I think I've talked rather a lot, I'm sorry. Um, within the units themselves, we're also pretty proud of, of how we've designed the way that these are assessed. We try to um, maximize their value to the students who give us their time and their energy. Um, so, so what we do is we, we produce online content modules that you can study at your own pace. Each one is about 10 hours of study that's chunked into sort of two hour blocks, which, um, you know, people find quite easy to fit around work commitments and family time and, and those sorts of things. Um, so it's, it's very self-contained and self-paced um, and, and, you know, you can, you can do it in your own, you know, particular way to suit your lifestyle. So what we do is we provide content and then we, you know, assess or, or test the, um, your knowledge during that process of, of teaching but that's not the major assessment for the unit. And in fact, the major assessment, we call it my context, which is a bit of a gimmick term, I know. Um, but the stress there is that we use the knowledge that, that, that you've got in the unit um, to address something that is of key interest to you personally. So it might be a professional interest from a workplace. It might be a personal interest because of you know, some family experience. It might be an intellectual interest you have um, a question that you want to answer, something that you want to explore more deeply. And so we get you to propose a, um, a major assessment piece um, and then we give you some feedback on that. And then through that um, sort of feedback and, and dialogue, um, you get to essentially dictate your own assessment, um, uh, the, the content of your own assessment. So um, this is in line with this, this idea that we have called authentic assessment, which is that um, testing knowledge on the basis of repetition or being able to feed back to us what we fed to you is not really useful. What we want to demonstrate to you is that the knowledge you're acquiring is, is powerful and useful in your own context, in your own life, in your own work. Um, and yeah, what better way to do that than to, for you to demonstrate that yourself in, in these my context pieces. So sometimes people, you know, devise workplace education or, or workplace strategies or um, they address um, an issue relating to a type of dementia and then they produce, um, in addition to a, an academic piece, they also produce a, um, a community education um, resource or, or a handout or 
a briefing for, for colleagues in a particular field or, or something like that. So we see a very broad array of, of very interesting pieces. And I think people really um, like being able to apply their knowledge um, immediately. We, we don't have any exams or anything like that within the course. It's just assessment of, of factual content. And then, and then that builds towards these major assessment pieces that, that you write in your own time and then submit and we, we give you feedback on them. Okay, um, so what can these degrees do for you? Um, a lot of organisations obviously recognise postgraduate qualifications, particularly at the master's level, and that can translate into a seniority and salary loading. Um, really, probably for most people, dementia is a very personal motivation. And so it's really about developing your expertise and perhaps exposing you to um, topics and concepts from fields that you had not initially considered. Um, a very common experience is that people come into the um, health um, systems and policies unit and think, gee, I don't really want to do that. And then they get like two weeks into it and they think, oh, wow, you know, this fundamentally affects the lived experience of people who have dementia. And, you know, simple um, concepts and simple changes can, can make the world of difference. Um, and, it, you know, it just becomes a, a very interesting topic that they've not previously engaged with. So that's, that's something that we hope by having that breadth of, of um, core topics that, um, that you get exposed to, to stuff that you might not have um, previously considered. And of course, you're exploring your, your personal and professional interests and you're joining that online community of people who might be you know, fascinated by or challenged by the same things that you're interested in. Um, and of course, this being a, a dementia research um, forum, um, I'd just like to, to mention briefly how exactly the, our program articulates with PhDs at the University of Tasmania. Um, we use what's called an alternate entry pathway. Um, and what that does is it assesses um, for an individual how their mix of experience and previous education and um, evidenced research readiness um, translates into um, entry to a PhD. And so the elements of the course that are related to research, i.e. The, the unit about um, methods in dementia research and then that um, intensive mentoring um, experience are explicitly designed to give you a portfolio um, that demonstrates your research readiness. Um, so that's the intent of, of the design um, around the degree is, is to um, yeah, uh, put you in the place where you're just about ready to, to step foot into a PhD program and you've probably already got your ethics written or you've already got a research grant in the pipeline. Um, so yeah, I was talking to our um, college head of, um, of research today and she was um, yeah, outlining for me the, the ways in which what, what we've got in our course will, will enable people to um, succeed with those applications if they've got that research aptitude. Okay, so that's all I've got to say. I just thought I'd finish with this slide again, just so that you can see the actual topics um, and the way that the um, degree is structured. This is a recording and, and would like to follow up, then um, please um, email um, through those um, addresses that we've got there on screen at the moment, that um, wiking inquiries at utas.edu.au, um, the dot in between wiking and inquiries or come to our website where there's more information about the, uh, about the programs. Um, or um, you can get in touch with us um, via Twitter with, if you search for Wiking on Twitter or, or me, Matt Kikorti, you can search me out and, and um, send me a query that way. Um, so if there's anything um, that uh, occurs to you or you would like to know more about, then we're here to answer your questions. And I hope that we see many of you um, come through the doors virtually and, and um, take on some of our postgraduate study. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for, for tuning in and, and finding out about this. We have, a, we have a very dedicated team who I think have developed an extraordinary um, piece of online education. And I hope um, that it's of interest and, and an exciting challenge for, for those of you who want to pursue this um, very worthwhile endeavour. So thank you.